Hello, it's me again. Can't get rid of me. Uh, I'm going to uh, just turn the camera around. Is that the uh, chat? Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. Just barely a second for anybody who has joined. Um, I just need to get the chat up as usual. When I'm filming from a uh, camera like this, there's no easy way to you know, sort of prepare and get the chat up in advance of the video. It's like, yeah, it's a bit um, belt and braces. There it is. Let's see. Pop the chat out. Ah, we've got some joiners. Hi, hi Starlight, nice to see you. Joseph Neal, CRG. Uh, Retro Game Revival. Hi guys. Yeah, as I say, it's stuff I'm gonna be doing anyway, so uh, I thought, why not share it with you? Um, I was a bit apprehensive about sharing some of the things I've been doing over the last few days, because, uh, well, I just didn't know whether it'd be interesting or not, but one or two people, including Dennis, uh, Retro Game Revival, said we should do it anyway, because actually, some of us are interested in this stuff, and um, you know, if they don't, people don't want to watch it, they won't watch it. Simple as that. Um, so yeah, thanks, uh, Dennis, for giving me maybe a bit of confidence to decide to try and do another one of these today. Um, you can see I've been messing around with this. This is an A500 memory expansion here. Um, the corrosion from the the battery would have been positioned here, uh, and obviously it's leaked. And uh, I think it's took out the. Uh, you know the pads and things underneath where the socket was there so the first thing I did is just clean it up and test it but it's just, it just wasn't doing anything you can see the uh, RAM chips here um, so they're like 20 pin uh, devices these uh, you've got four of them that's another thing to consider when you look at something like this you can try you can work out how many bits each one's handling just by virtue of the system it's connected to so the Amiga is a 16-bit uh, system uh, so you need 16 bits, uh, you know, a data uh, bus on there. So in order to achieve that, well, four chips, you could just divide 16 by four and it's going to tell you that the answer is four. So each one of these is going to handle four bits each, you know, four, eight, 12, uh, 16. Um, anyway, so yeah, I took the, the chips off here. You can see uh, the legs look super shiny, actually on those, but one of them, I forget which one it was now, one of them has been cleaned up, is it that one? Yeah, that one I think has been cleaned up. Yeah, it's not too bad now. It's not too bad now. They were really, really green, the pins. Uh, hence why I took that socket off. Um, so I need to clean up on both sides of that. We'll have a look at that in a second. Let me just move these ram chips uh, out of the way onto the other mat over there, actually. So they don't get in the way. Uh, yeah, that socket will go in the bin. Um, so a few of the things to show you that have uh, arrived as well here. I'll catch up with you in a sec, guys. Uh, this came from Furtec. Um, this is really nice. I'm really super excited to receive this. Um, so Furtec has uh, helped me out actually because I couldn't quite afford to buy this at the time. And he, I was on the pre-order. I said, "Can you hold on to it till the end of the month until I get paid?" And he was like, well, "I'll tell you what. I'll send it to you anyway because uh, you know I like the channel, um, and maybe you could have a look at it and do a review." So um, yeah, I will be doing a review on this. You can just be able to see through there. Neo uh, SD loader. So this is the Neo Geo uh, SD card type solution for the Neo CD, uh, created by Furtex. So I'll do that in a video on its own. We might do it as a live stream video, I'm not sure yet. But uh, yeah, that'll be something coming up uh, soon. You can see he's got his own, uh, when he's done the stamp here, he's got his own uh, Furtex logo on the stamp. I think it is. That's very cool. Maybe it's not. It looks like it is. It might be a legit stamp from the French postal system that just happens to have a fox on it. But anyway, I thought that was nice, a nice touch. Uh, so I've ordered an advanced 64 gig uh, card for that. So, yeah, that will be uh, something to look at at some point in uh, the near future, I think. As I say, though, I might do it as a rather than a live stream. I might just do a separate video on it. Um, so as well as this RAM board here, um, I've look, been looking at this one previously. Now, I forget exactly who provided this to the channel. It, it may have been Tom. I don't think it was. It could have been. But I think actually it came from... Um, the Swedish chap that provided, I'll just lift the camera up here, provided that Danish uh, A. Uh, I think it came with that. I think it was one of the extra things that uh, came along with that. So it's a bit 
as you can see it's got fluff and dust it's been sat on the side for ages you can see i looked at this previously i think what i did is i took the ram off here socketed it up because again you know you can see some dark corroded traces here and i wasn't sure there was something under there but it still wasn't working after putting brand new sockets on and testing the connectivity so i'm going to come back to looking at this one as well after we've sorted out this one we'll get a socket on here and retest that um you can see there was one broken trace that i fixed with a the wire there um it's got some missing stuff as well just looking at this you know observation i was like well, where's the battery i think the battery would have gone um between these contacts here you know perhaps the positive on this side the negative on that side but then there's something missing there look i didn't notice that the first time around but it's not sufficient the thing that's missing there wouldn't cause the ram to not be recognized and that's what's happening with this ram board at the moment and this one both of these the ram is just not recognized it's like you stick it in you've got the zero extra ram <coughs> but the um, component there and i talked about this the other day when i was talking about real-time clock chips and things now to fix these on certain boards you've got the crystal and you can see that one side of it here comes down to a cap and the other side is going to be ground and the other side is going down this track something missing so it's obvious it's going to be a cap it probably would have had a variable cap something like that there but we can just literally you know clean the contacts there and stick uh, maybe a 22 peak forward cap and that should at least get the uh, clock working so uh, yeah that's those so we'll have a look at uh, those in a sec let me just uh, put those out the way over here uh, and we've got a third one here as well so maybe this will be a, an a500 ram <laughs> ram uh, repair uh, you know video so you can see this one here, this is again came from tom meads this one um some burning and charring has occurred there has that been part of the actual removal of that cap or did it actually burn out i don't know honestly don't know um and again the typical corrosion you get here associated with where the battery would be so it's, it's not too bad though you know the, the leaking has not uh significantly affected that in any kind of way you know sometimes it goes and it corrodes all up here and it goes all around the ram and all over the place so um yeah that should be all right and again it's got the same chips look four chips there going to be four bits each 512k in uh, total um just wondering what these extra chips here are for actually on this one that's uh, unusual. I wonder if that's so that it can be classed as chip RAM, maybe? I don't know. You've got some additional address decoding there that's not kind of normal. Um, well, not when you compare to some one of these others. You know, he's got exactly the same chips, the same real time clock chip there. Can you see that? Okie. Okay. Uh, what is it? It's uh, 6242B, I think, if my uh, eyesight's right. Um, so, yeah, that's all you need. You need the four RAM chips and the real time clock chips. So, these here, hmm, not sure not sure at all um but anyway we'll uh, have a look at those three things let me just uh, catch up with the chat because i've been missing anything that anyone said here uh just changed to live i hope you're all well by the way hope everyone's uh, okay and no one's ill mike simcox hi nice to see you afternoon uh ray palmer how much ram is being expanded by yeah, all of these are 512k. All three of those boards are 512k. Um, to take uh, an A500 but to a meg. Uh, Retro Game Revival, I threw my A500 corroded expansion boards in there. Came out squeaky clean. He's, I think he's talking about ultrasonic cleaner. Yeah, he is. I just read the previous message he said there. You happen to have an ultrasonic clean, uh, ultrasonic by chance. I was thinking of getting an ultrasonic cleaner. If uh, I can continue to you know, build the Patreon support up a little bit. Uh, I might be able to get one at some point. That's, I think I was going to stick that on there as a goal, actually. That might be the next thing I think I aim to do with the channel because um, some stuff, uh, I'm just moving you a bit nearer, some stuff like this board here is, uh, this is where an ultrasonic cleaner would be super useful. I mean, obviously the board's too big. I'd have to get a really, really big one. But nevertheless, if I could get one that's sufficiently large, uh, you know, using it to clean up something like this would be uh, ideal. Now, you're not going to... You're not going to know how bad this board was unless you look at the pictures I posted on Twitter. I posted kind of a before shot of this and then a, a couple of the pictures just showing as I started to make various progress here. So I started by removing the stuff uh, down here and then yesterday I uh, I think I removed, cleaned up here, removed those two and um, started to clean up some of the stuff here. All these components here were all furry. The solder points were terrible. There's a little bit of tissue on there I've just noticed. Um, so I might do a little bit on here, you know, remove one or two things and show you that, share that with you. But what I don't want to do is do an entire stream doing nothing but taking components off that board. 
because you get, it'll go on for hours and hours. To be fair, I haven't had to spend long doing that. Um, I spent um, two, maybe two and a half hours doing the bottom part of the board there, and then yesterday about an hour just removing a couple more chips and doing some more cleanup. The one thing I will say is the you know the keyboard connectors here, they broke off. You know this one here was just literally hanging on. I touched it and it fell off, and then the other one I just bent it a little bit and it snapped off. So they were you know well gone. You need to replace those with. Uh, new connectors and likewise the things we're going to be doing to this it, when i've stripped everything from sort of up here like that i'm tempted to take that off I'm tempted to take the uh, ioc off there but um yeah i wouldn't try and clean well i will i mean, you know what i'm like i will clean anything up but i will try and clean these chips up but i've got brand new replacements for the the, the chips here i haven't got one for the small real-time clock uh, you know mv ram type uh, thing down there the one that holds all the settings and has the real-time clock um, but all the smaller components and things, I've just literally, I've got them in a bag here, just so you can see at the end how bad they work. And you see the greenness on the socket there. Yeah, they're all absolutely well and truly gone, you know. So um, the idea is to put brand new components on there. Uh, beeps, hi. Nice to see you, Beeps. Dermot Sweeney, hi. Hi, Dermot. Dermot's the guy that provided the uh, ACO here. So, yeah, thank you very much, Dermot. I'll try and mention you every time I can because. That um, Heiko is such a wonderful uh, solver. Simon Shepherd, who's uh, about in, hang on. So who's been how long before the camera falls over? Yeah, well, it's, it's probably going to happen, isn't it? I'll be amazed if the camera doesn't fall over half a dozen times throughout this street. Um, but they are what they are. So like I say, if people don't want to watch it, don't watch it. I did have a guy the other day. I had a few guys actually saying different things. But I had a guy the other day saying, uh, oh, so I guess people like watching these streams then, as if, like, you know, it's a problem. Uh, my advice is if you don't like my streams, don't watch them. Um, similarly, we had a guy kicking off saying, this is the world's most boring stream the other day, didn't we? Uh, and again, why was he watching the stream then? He just continued to post lots of negative comments all the way through it. Um, clearly, it wasn't that boring because he was enjoying posting his negative comments. Uh, yeah, so a couple of uh, ICs have arrived there as well. I think those are 125s, actually. I think I had that uh, a while back when I was looking at those uh, A4000 boards. So uh, I'll put those out of the way. just had to open those there to see what they were because I wasn't sure. Uh, which mega is this? The 1000? Yeah, no, that motherboard. It's an Archimedes A3000, bro. <clears throat> Beeps. It's uh, an Archimedes, though. So, uh, yeah, we'll come back to the Archimedes maybe towards the end of the video, I think. Let's put that out of the way for the moment. And what we'll do is I'll have a look at these memory expansions next, I think. So, uh, yeah, we'll kind of start with that one, I think, because that was the one I've been focused on most recently. But we will have a look at the other two as well. Hopefully there should be, mm, should be quick fixes. It really depends, doesn't it? So uh, let me just try and get things uh, in place here, switch the iron on. The first thing I need to do really is just clean up the pads there with a little bit of uh, braid and some flux. I can show you some of the, the chips I removed from that Archimedes actually, just have a look how bad the uh, pins are. Um, yeah, I'm not sure it's going to show up very well. So yeah, they're all like dark grey on the end there. Some of these are worse than others. I mean, look at that one there, it's green. Can you see the green bits on it? So, yeah, they're going to take a lot of work to clean those up. They're going to have to be uh, retinned. Look at that one. Furry. I'm amazed none of the pins have broke off on these, actually. They may well do if I, if I don't handle them properly. Look at those. Awful. Absolutely awful. Uh, anyway, let's just uh, put those back over there. Ray Pavo wonders if anyone tried memory expansion using 512k SRAM chip instead of DRAM chips. Yeah, the thing with the DRAM versus SRAM, DRAM's got RAS and CAS control lines, you know, um, and less address bits. You know, you use the RAS and the CAS to specify whether you're addressing the row or the column. You know, it's like multiplex, you do it in two uh, halves there. You know, you address the row and then you address the column. Think of it as like a grid, you know, X and Y. You're doing it one way, and then you load a few address bits there to do it in the other orientation to get your location in the RAM there. Uh, with SRAM, you've just got a long line of address bits, you know, so it's the same sort of thing, but if you think of the address bits coming down like that, 
well, in a matrix, yes. You've got the same sort of thing, but you haven't got Ras and Kaz, is the point I'm trying to make. Uh, so if you wanted to adapt to using SRAM, you need something there to uh, handle the Ras and Kaz, you know, and kind of extend that out to work with the, the additional dress bits you have on an SRAM. But you can do that. There's plenty of people who produce little boards to do the similar sort of thing, so you can fit SRAM as a replacement. It's, uh, it's not rocket science stuff. So maybe we'll have a look at that at some point in a, another video perhaps. Uh, so before I just start that with the uh, braid, I'm just going to give it a wipe with uh, some vinegar. So I've got some white vinegar here. Um, um, I mean I have pretty thoroughly cleaned this with white vinegar previously, if I'm honest, but the pins just uh, look awful there. Uh, they really do. Look how brown that's gone. Yeah, so let's get a little bit of flux onto the braid. Nearly time to get a new tube of flux, I think. I'm going to try and do this without blocking the blooming camera again. So let's, uh, and melting that socket there, let's just start there. It's making like sizzling noises. It's not the flux that's doing that, it's because there's a bit of alkaline still on there. Yeah, that one's cleaned. One one pad cleaned up there. The other ones aren't doing anything. Strength coming from a slightly different angle. So what you guys been doing? I was thinking of doing my garden later. Actually, my grass is getting super long at the front of the house there. Yeah, they aren't much cleaner. I'll give you a close-up in uh, a second if I can. Now we could lose pads here, I can see bits of these disintegrating as I'm touching them actually. But hopefully we won't lose too many, hopefully it's just like the odd one or two. I think one of my cats is trying to get in actually, I might just have to let them in. I can hear them scratching at the uh, glass here. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Yeah, you can see that marginally. There's a few pads there that's still looking pretty bad on it. Dermot Sweeney, no problem, Gadget. Thank you, thank you, Dermot. Uh, picked up an N64 cart for my first Nintendo pickup. Ah, awesome. Awesome. I look forward to uh, seeing that on your channel, Dermot. Mike Simcox, I'm repairing your GameCube control today. Still waiting for more faulty, my faulty zipstick to arrive. Oh, excellent. It can be fun repairing things like that. You know, it's like, say, if you're getting bored and you want some, some challenges, have a look, see what stuff you can find on eBay. There's loads of, you know, smaller things. I mean, things like this, RAM expansions, um, controllers, you know, mice, joysticks, uh, light guns. Those are the sort of things that could keep you uh, occupied for a few hours. It's a fun, uh, you know, interesting challenge. Um, just looking at that dissolved braid, somehow I've ended up with two things coming out of it. How's that? Um, yeah, it's because it's at the end, isn't it? That's what it is. That bit there just was wrapping around there on the inside. Anyway, um, so I'm just thinking what else to do with that now. I could do is just give it a little bit more of a go with the braid. Let me just put the braid down. Just give it another pass, and then we'll get the socket on it. I'm hoping that is the only damage because it, you know, it kind of did look like you know. When I took these chips out here, the legs were perfect. Just this one here was super green, and it's as a consequence of being so near there. So I think the, the the likelihood of being some corrosion under there is slim. And if you actually look at this one, this is another thing to do on boards like this: is when you've got one off, is consider how it's actually wired. Well, there's very few traces on this side. There's just like I think one or two traces there that could be corroded on here that we need to check in a sec and it's probably going to be the same up here you might have the odd one because as you can see here we've got three traces running through the middle so yeah you could argue that maybe something under there could be corroded um, they are quite simple to repair these but uh, as I should talk about when we come to that other one the one I've already uh, looked at myself sometimes they can be a pain sometimes you can be doing all the stuff you know replacing the chips with you know take the chips off put sockets on 
cleaning everything up, fixing the odd trace, it still doesn't work. Roll the, uh, reflow, solder points on the connectors and things, still doesn't work. You spend hours cleaning the thing, it still doesn't work. And you're like, what's wrong with this? And that, that's the case of that other one. You change the RAM over, it still doesn't work. And you know the RAM's all right. And you're like, what? How does it not work? You know, and it's just like you've missed something somewhere, like a little bit of corrosion on one uh, socket pin or a trace that looked okay that actually isn't. So it can be really annoying. But most of the time, you'll find you can get these working super easily. It's no, usually no more than just a, you know a bit, of, a bit of solder, maybe swap one socket, add one wire, you're done kind of thing. Whether I'll be that lucky with this one, I don't know. Um, the uh, other one, uh, this one, the one came from Tom Meads, because both of these two came from Tom Meads. This one, he was saying if, if I could fix this, he'd like it back, but it works. <laughs> so. When it says fix it, I think we're just going to need to, this one here. We'll just get a cap on there, clean that up, clean that up, and maybe stick a back button cell on here and test the real time clock. But the, the RAM expansion side of that A501 there, it works okay. It works okay, I'll show you that. I did a test on that yesterday. It's, uh, it's working fine. Um, as I always say, if you want uh, my attention, try and uh, you know, send me a comment with at gadget uk164, and uh, hopefully I'll uh, spot it. I still keep missing the message even when people do that, but it highlights it in yellow at my side, you see, and then I, uh, well, hopefully should see it. So there we go, that's looking a lot better under there, just for having uh, used a bit of uh, flux and dissolver braid. Uh, I'm just going to just gently go over that now with a fiberglass pen. I can find them there, don't think. Here it is. Again, you've got to be super careful because it'd be easy to damage something here. Yeah, there's, there's next to no connections on that side, isn't there? There's one up here, and there's two or three here, this side just near the top there. Sorry, I'm wobbling all over the place while I'm doing that. Anyway, that's, uh, that's looking pretty good, that. I think let's just give it another wipe. So let's uh, see if we can maybe measure around a little bit on that. Just to see if it can work out if anything's broken. CRG, I asked it, uh, ex oh, I can't see that. I asked early, and you maybe missed it. Sorry, I, I will have done. Uh, what's your opinion between using pressed sockets for turn pin sockets? for IC such as those RAM chips. Um, where they're already socketed, I will just stick another socket on there. It's not, because there's no, I see no advantage. If you've got only got turn pin, obviously just stick a turn pin on there. But you can see, because these were socketed, they've got nice long legs on. Um, but if you remove a chip from a board that's soldered straight on, at manufacture, they will cut off the underneath of the legs. It's very rare, you know, it's not like they just stuck a chip on, soldered it, and that's it. They, they stick the chip on, they solder it, and then they trim all the underneath of the legs. So you lose, you know, I don't know, 20 or 30% of the length of the leg, on some boards even more. So when it comes to, you know, you trying to, maybe you needed to remove that chip to fix a trace here, but then you're like, well, okay, I need to get a socket on. Well, if you put the original chip back into a, 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 a dual wipe socket, these probably aren't dual wipe, I don't know, they, maybe they are, it's hard to tell. But if you stick it into a normal socket, uh, you'll find that the length of the legs means it doesn't stay in there very well. It's got very little holding it in. Um, so with a turn pin socket, it's far, far, far easier and, um, to work with chips like that that you've removed. They've got short legs. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those, really. I'm sure there's probably other reasons as well. I won't spring to mind at the moment, but... Yeah, just checking we're still there. Yeah, we are. We've got, good God, we've got 67 people watching. Uh, thanks for the thumbs up, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, right, so that's that. Let's just get the meter. Hang on. Switch on to continuity test. Um, might not be easy to test this because I can't really see what goes where here. Let me just try and move the camera closer. Uh, I'm sure I can point you any further down, actually. Can I can zoom you a bit? Mm, that's probably the best thing to do. Move you back and zoom you in a bit. Stick something under there, so yeah. So, uh, 
I'll try and not block in the shot here. So there's a trace uh, there going to that uh, second pin. Uh, and it's going... Where's it going? It's going under here somewhere, isn't it? Let's just... There we go. Um, I guessed there that it's going to be going to the same pin on another chip. And I'm guessing it's going to go to the same on all of them. That's one thing that can help you with these. And I'll show you the uh, data sheet for this. Although you can't bloody see it's so awful, the print. Um, yeah, so I printed this off because I, I thought we might need this if we need to look at it, the logic uh, uh, probe there. Um, so if you look at the pin out there, that's probably the good example. So the pin we were just probing there, let me think about this. So the chip, the chips go that way. I know that because I've put a red dot up here before I pulled them out of the socket. Because these sockets, uh, it's not clear, there's no mark and no silk screen of any kind to give you clues to which way the chips go around. Um, but nevertheless, so it's going to be aligned like that, isn't it? So that pin I was just looking at there is going to be this one here, A3. So you will find that on all these chips, all the chips on here, all of the address lines are going to be joined together. So A3 is going to go to the same pin on the next chip, etc. And same with A2, A1, A0, and 45678. Um, the Raz and Kaz, um, again, may be joined. Yeah, I think they're probably going to be joined up as well, actually, thinking about it. On this because you've only got one bank of 512k uh, we can test that in a minute anyway um, what else have you got so you've got like the VCC pin where's that now I can't see it's in this corner here so those are all going to be joined together um, the output enables may be again all joined up together it's like most of the pins they're going to be joined up together the only ones typically are not sometimes the and cars depending on whether they're in different banks if you've got like different banks of memory on the board then they're going to be driven by different signals there probably and same with the output enabled they could be in uh, you know have different signals going to them but the data pin i can't really see which one it is there let's have a look at that chip instead uh might help if i just turn it that way so i can actually read it yeah you've got i oh four yeah i oh one two and four yeah i know one two three and four four data bits so those are not going to be joined in parallel because this is a 16-bit system we want those uh you know 16 bits to be separate then we're going to go to two separate places um anyway so let's just uh test continuity on the next one so we've we've covered that first uh well not the first pin the second pin there the third one was that go third one again yeah it's another address line fourth one again that's okay and I guess we could test that on those as well. Doesn't do any harm. Yeah, I missed a pin there, didn't I? I just jumped to the wrong pin. Anyway, so those three, uh, so I could show you. Um, yeah, those three pins there are okay. So what does that leave? It just leaves uh, this one uh, here, I think. Can we just see what that one is in the diagram? That one's a five. Like that. Yeah. Okay, so I'm comfortable, I think, looking at that, that the connections on this side are okay, we've got no damage. On this side, it's a slightly different story because, well, you can see the pads just look absolutely awful. These were proven near impossible to dissolve, the corrosion had uh, got onto them, and it was, uh, yeah, proven very difficult. Anyway, let's get a socket. We can uh, get a socket on quick, get the chip on, wheel out all the chips on the wheel out to the uh, screen and test it. I'm just catching up with the chat again. I tell you, good bit to watch when you can. Manic Vince, GBA repair. Yes, uh, Brian. I watched that video. I think it's amazing how Vince has gone from strength to strength. Um, I mean, I've watched Vince for many years, but I didn't realise it was only up until uh, recently. I didn't realise he was doing more modern stuff, and I didn't, didn't realise he was doing all his fixed stuff. Actually, if I'm honest, it was about a year or two back now. Smooth MJ, Malcolm, um, pointed out, uh, you should check out my mate Vince. And I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, and then I realised I, I had been subscribed to Vince at some point, but it was around the time when he was in telephone stuff. So anyway, I started watching uh, his channel. And uh, I'll tell you what, I have learned things from Vince. I've learned a lot of things from Vince. Um, what I like about Vince, you know, he makes mistakes like I do, but he's uh, persistent. He doesn't give up. He wants, he's wants. he got a thirst for knowledge, you know. That's an important thing to have when you do it. Uh, just trying to clean those pins out a little bit. There's just a few of them that when I up to the light. Uh, at a weird angle here. Yeah, so my mate Vince, he's gone from strength to strength over the last 12, 13 months. Some of the stuff he's repaired, I tell you what, he wows me. He really does. Um, 
He'll be the first to admit he's learning himself. He's like me, he's a novice. But um, it doesn't take away the amazingness of some of the things he does, actually. That Game Boy Advance. You know what I thought when I looked at it? I was like, ah, oh, it's just not worth the effort. It'll be, it's going to be the charge chip. You spend hours trying to work it out, you know. But actually, it wasn't the charge chip. It was like covert corrosion in, uh, yeah, I'm not going to spoil it. You've got to watch that video. It is a really good video. So, yeah, uh, nice recommendation there, Ryan. Uh, I like your taste. You've got good taste. Sorry, I know I blocked it a bit there. Anyway, hopefully the socket should go on now. Let's uh, just flip it over. Um, so, as I say, I stuck some red dots up here, so now that pin one goes that way, it's this socket. Um, we can uh, get pin one the right way. Yeah, so you can see the can you see the difference? This one here's got a little uh, what's a pointy thing on. So useful this tool. We've used it for so many things. Yeah, we've got a pointy thing there. Look, so we know that's pin one. These haven't. Oh, they have. They've got a bigger thing here. Yeah, I never noticed that. Yeah, that side's solid. Look. So yeah, ignore what I'm talking about. Those sockets aren't quite as crazy as I thought they were. Um, anyway, let's just flip it over. Get some solder. Solder it on. <sighs> Good evening, Steve, uh, Terrible Fire. Hello, Stephen. Hope you're feeling a bit better. Uh, I know you've not been uh, well this last week. Are you any better today? I hope you are, because I'm looking forward to seeing uh, something from you at some point if you get a chance, if you feel up to it. Um, as I say, even just if it's, uh, you know, I'm just going to play some games on the 1260, you know, or something like that. Show us uh, some demos and things and have a bit of a waffle. Talk about things you might want to do in the future. It's always nice. Uh, I'm just looking at that socket there. Can you see? Let me just show you that. I just noticed that's weird. I think it's just a really cheap man. This old one. Can you see? It's got like a raised edge or something on it there. Yeah, it's just a cheap and nasty socket, isn't it? Maybe the corrosion's done that. I don't know. Did I touch that with the iron? I don't think I did. Maybe I did. I mean, I might watch this stream later, back later and go, "Oh my god, I melted it myself with the with the iron." I don't know. Anyway, it's not that important. The socket is okay. I'm just checking you can still see what I'm doing. Let's just quickly, uh, we'll just solder one corner there, make sure it's flat. And then I'll just get the other points done. And we can go try it. Nearly had a disaster with the internet shopping today. Um, went up with Tesco, and uh, the same guy who's done the same thing before gave, us half, gave me half the shopping. And I knew there was only half of it there. I'm like, where's the other crates? And he was like looking in the back of the van for about 10 minutes. I thought, oh, this is, does not bode well, you know. He's, something's happened. He's either not been given them at the uh, warehouse, you know, or whatever, collected them, or they've gone elsewhere. Well, it turns out he delivered them to the wrong address, given them to someone else. So uh, I then to wait an extra 30 minutes for him to come back with the uh, crates. Luckily, I think the person who he did deliver them to, um, was kind enough to admit it and say, you've given me a load of stuff that aren't mine. I mean, it wouldn't have been the end of the world. It would have just meant I would have had to go out. I'm trying to limit that at the moment. While we're on the subject of going out, I posted on uh, Twitter a bit earlier on uh, about my neighbour from hell. You know, I've told you about this neighbour before. He plays music at, you know, ridiculous decibels at th two, three, four o'clock in the morning so that the entire neighbourhood can hear it. And um, anyway, surprisingly, he's been quite quiet over the period. But uh, no, not yesterday. Yesterday, he decided to have a complete housewarming, well, not housewarming, but a house party. There's like 10 people in his garden, you know, laughing and dancing and singing. At, uh, you know, gone midnight, one in the morning. And then he decided to start a barbecue um, as well. You know, there was like this, all you could see out the window is this giant fireball in the centre of his garden. He's very close to our house. And I was like, oh my God, our roof's going to go up on fire if he, you know, if you get little cinders floating up from the, the fire, in theory, you've had a hot day, you know, you could start setting people's roofs on fire. So we were really worried. I couldn't sleep for about an hour because of the noise. There was like laughing and giggling. It was like a full-blown party going on. So anyway, my wife said, ah, we need to ring the police just, if anything, because this fire, if this fire gets out of hand, this is going to be a big problem. You know, it's like you wake up in the night and find the roof on fire or something. I could just imagine that happening. Um, anyway, the police didn't want to know. Lancashire police are like, well, you need to ring the fire, fire brigade. And I'm like, well, hang on a minute. It's like, 
seven or eight, pe uh, ten people almost in, our, in the, one of the neighbors' gardens having a party, all come from different locations, cars at the front of the house, and you're not bothered about that? And they're not. They're not, which is just, I don't know, it's just, it doesn't make any sense at all. I've got nothing wrong with people, uh, let's say, I've got to be careful how I word this. There's going to be instances out there, people that need to go and see someone for one reason or another. Now, it might be that they're on the verge of a breakdown or something. They need to see someone, family member or something. It might be that they need to take them food. Now, I'm not condoning that. I'm not condoning that at all. But, you, you know, what I'm trying to get at here is if you're going to do things like that, if you need to go... And I do know somebody who's in that situation who's periodically going to see their father. And the way they're doing it is uh, very carefully, like going into the garden, sitting 20 or 30 feet away from the, the, the father, and they're shouting each other across the garden. You know what I mean? And it's like a quick 20-minute visit, and then he walks back to his house afterwards. i got no problems with things like that. You know, that's not. don't get me wrong, I'm not a snitch sort of person that looks out the window and goes, oh, what can I ring the police about? I'm not, that isn't me at all. But what I do take offence to is when someone starts an inferno in the garden, which is a fight, it was a fire risk, a significant fire risk, at three in the morning, two or three in the morning, yeah, blasting out music, keeping everyone awake, including lots of old age pensioners that live nearby. The fumes coming off it, I had to shut the windows because the fumes were going right up the wall and you could smell it. I felt like I was actually at the barbecue. So, yeah, that's the thing. That's, that's the point I'm trying to make. I, I'm not one of those people that goes out the way to try and complain about things or ever need to ring the police about anything. You know what? I think the police, seem, seemingly for me, are useless. The few times I've had to ring them, I've had no support whatsoever. So, uh, yeah, they're a to themselves at the moment, aren't they? Um, that said, I'm not disrespecting them categorically. There's lots of police out there helping people and doing good things, and it could well be that they've been overstretched, which is why they're having to just, uh, you know, dismiss some of this stuff at the moment and go, well, we can't deal with it, we've got more important things. Um, anyway, I think I've said enough on that subject. That's just my what happened to me, my experience. Um, it's frustrating. It's frustrating for everybody, isn't it? There's lots of people out there getting super frustrated, the fact they can't, uh, can't go about the normal lives. It's very, very difficult, difficult times. Uh, I'm just catching up, reading some of these comments here. Uh, I found it and took to his channel, that's great. I presume you talk about my mate Vince. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a great guy, he really is. Uh, I had the privilege that I spoke to him a few times, he rang me, you know, we kind of keep in touch. I, he's a really funny, funny guy. Some of the stories and things he's told me, uh, he's a clever, interesting guy. It's no wonder he's doing so well. Um, you know, he may make mistakes and things. You know, there's certain things you watch and you go, oh my goodness, he's, he's doing what? He's hot gluing that? Why is he hot gluing that? He's got a thing about hot glue. <laughs> he likes his hot glue. Uh, but, you know, it's pretty rare. Most of the time you'll be looking at things going, well, okay, other than his soldering perhaps not being as good as yours, you might complain about that. That's not really a valid point, is it? Because it isn't all about how clean your soldering is. It's about does your soldering do the job? Have you fixed the problem? Have you been intelligent enough to work out the problem? And that's the thing with Vince. Vince is super clever. He, uh, he's always learning. And, you know, and so am I. I've learned a few things off him. It's, uh, it's been really good watching those uh, Nintendo Switch videos because there's few people doing repairs on them and sharing what they're finding and sharing what they're learning as they're going along. You know, even if it is a mistake they've made. Um, and, but Vince has done that totally on a, a lot of Nintendo Switches. Um, and it's surprising actually the amount of information that's been built up gradually as a result of people like Vince um, doing the repairs he has been doing on them. Including one that he did recently which was an amazing one that you know, helped him with a little bit. He asked me for some advice and that's just helped point him in the right direction. But the net result was he, uh, he fixed a backlight problem. Not only that, he then you know, shed a lot of light on how that backlight circuit works, where the chip is, what components are around it. And then also, reflecting back and looking at one, the older version of the Switch, not the Switch Lite, and uh, he's found the chip on there and that part of the circuit again, so it's like, it's useful information. You, and, and the voltages, measuring the voltages there. If you get a problem with the backlight on a Nintendo Switch, you want to hit that, those videos of Vince's. Um, anyway, I've spectacularly made a mess of that, haven't I? It's, uh, well, it needs a brush now. Let's get a brush and where's it going? Yeah, I can't really talk and do things at the same time, can I? It's taking uh, far too long. It 
it's not a breach of peace laws uh, for making noise for Lebanon or something like that anyway. Yeah, well, that's the thing, though. Even though we have perhaps laws like that, they don't care. We've had problems like that before where there's been numerous people working, yeah, it's a weekday. Everyone needs to sleep, and two or three in the morning, you've got this music blasting out. The fire, you can hear it three streets away. The police don't give a crap. It's like, that. as far as they're concerned, you need to go around and deal with yourself. That's what they said. That's what they said. They said, you need to go and, you know, and that, that's the only time I've ever had to ring them, actually. This is the second time ever that I've needed to ring the police for anything like that. Um... Because I'm one of these people that leave people to their own devices. So people do things like that, fair enough. If they're quiet enough, fair enough, I don't care. But when they start destroying everybody else's lives around them, people aren't allowed to, you know, able to sleep, to go to work and all that sort of stuff, it starts to become a problem, doesn't it? It's antisocial uh, disorder. You can't, you can't do that. You've got to have respect for other people. And I think that's the problem, isn't it? Some people just don't care at all about anybody else but themselves. And that's what I have offence to. That's the point I'm trying to make here. You know, cause different ways of looking at it, isn't it? It's like, if people need to go see people, um, there's ways of doing it. It's like, say, if, if that guy wanted to have a party with a few of his mates, maybe because it's his birthday or something, I don't know. I'm not condoning it. I'm not right, but there's different ways he could have done it. He could have had his mates come in and sneakily, you know, shut the door and then they could have watched some films and had some music in the house, some drinks. No one would have known. No one would have known. That's the thing. It's like it's just taking everybody else into the equation at the same time, isn't it? Make us because imagine if I had run the fire brigade, yeah? Then if the fire brigade then putting their lives at risk because they're having to deal with these people and they you know, we don't just got it and who who hasn't and stuff like that. It's taking the fire brigade away from a, a, what might be a real fire as well. That's the other way of looking at it. Anyway, I could go on and on and on about this subject. Right, anyway, it's as clean as it's going to get for the moment. You can see there's uh, three solder points there that have been bridged. Now, I'm not sure if that's bridged correctly. Um, I guess we could work that out, if we could work out where it goes on the connector here and have a look at the A500 schematics, but we can try it in either way. You can see there's a trace on the underside, so it's this one here, and it looks like it's... Uh, joined to this thin trace that goes along here. It should be, but it's not at the moment. It's open. So uh, let's uh, let's just bridge that because I think that's open circuit, man. I think maybe that needs to be on. Could be wrong. What do you guys think? Do you think that needs to be open circuit to be enabled, or do you think it needs to be closed to be enabled? I actually think uh, we just need an extra bit of solder here to bridge the whole lot because there is, in theory, there's two pins. We're just bridging the two pins, even though there's three. One of them is just not used. So, yeah, we'll just get a crazy blob of solder like that. We'll clean it all up afterwards, so remove the wires, maybe put a switch on it or something. Um, yeah, it's basically for others. Exactly. That's the thing, isn't it? It's like I say, if people are going to do these things, don't drag everybody else into it. You know what I mean? I'm not condoning going and meeting people, but if they need to, absolutely need to, to deliver food or whatever. Um, yeah, there's right and wrong ways of doing it, isn't there? Right, let's uh, let's get these chips back in here. That blob of solder's still really hot <laughs> on the other side there. I suddenly burnt myself on it. Finished soldering about a minute ago, and it's still hot. So uh, yeah, these the legs on these were very clean. It was just the one chip. Yeah, I must I must have touched that. I don't know. I don't remember touching that socket with the iron like that. Maybe I did. Because it's like it's raised up here. I'm going to have to replace that socket now. Yeah, I must have touched that. Let me just get the uh, file onto that, if I can find the bloody thing. <sighs> Again, it's the consequence of trying to do a stream. When I'm trying to do a stream, I'm not watching things that I would normally be watching. I'm not, you know, I'm not as ca quite as careful because I'm trying to look at what's going on in the camera rather than what's going on uh, on the, with the iron. I must have touched that. Can't be anything else. It's just like the edge, the lip of it. I must have just caught it as I was uh, using the braid. Uh, the other thing I would say as well, this is only a cheap, a cheap memory expansion. It's not like rare Commodore hardware. This is a, it's a, you know, a third party, super cheap uh, memory expansion. So there's a bit of plastic there. Yeah, I must have done that because the chip wouldn't have gone in otherwise. You know, I'm sure I've had these chips in and out of here. 
Let's make sure that's the right way around. Yeah, that's it. I mean, the worst case is I could just take that socket off and replace it again, but we're going to have a mismatch of sockets on there, aren't we? Anyway, so that's all the chips back in. Let's wheel over to the other side of the room and just see if that's working. We might need to change that jumper position over. Uh, that might solve it. Def Pom's Electronic Repair. Hi. Hi, nice to see you. Uh, you should check out Def Pom's uh, channel as well, actually. He does lots of interesting repairs. Uh, recently, I think I've been watching him do a couple of MacBook type ones. I think he had like a, a GPU fault or something. There was something else there where he put some sort of override chip to do with the GPU fault. I forget exactly what it was now, but it was really interesting to watch. So you should check out Def Pom's uh, channel. Just catch it up, catch it up. Uh, sales uh, shouldn't be having fires because of <laughs> yeah, the, the, the people's respiratory issues. Exactly. I'll be honest, like, and I might mention this, but like my asthma's been playing up for the last few months. I've had to keep waking up with really tight chest in the morning, feel like I can't breathe. Um, I've never had that for twenty odd years. It's, it's worrying me a little bit, to say the least. And with the fumes last night, that's why I had shut the windows and things. Um, so yeah, respiratory issues. Yeah, people shouldn't be doing that sort of thing. Uh, CRG, Vince's videos are great, always interesting. Uh, I learned most things I do from him and your good self, Gadget. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I watch Vince's videos to hear about him saying, yes, yeah, yeah, I do. I love it when he gets a really good result where he's, you know, he's overjoyed with it. The excitement in his voice and stuff, it's like you, can, you know it's coming, you, yeah, you, you, you're waiting for it. Uh, uh, and he's always busy. There's always so many repairs. You know, it's seldom a week goes by where he's not had a couple of videos out in a week. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to the next one. Uh, whereabouts in the lakes are you? I'm sure. Uh, what's that? Oh, I'm from there, Nelson, uh, Vernley, Colleen. Um, yeah, I'm around the. I don't want to say I'm stream to be honest. I'm around the Lancashire area. I'm near, near, sort of in between Preston and Manchester. Let's so, say. Um, Right, let's just take this over there and uh, give it a try. Let's put that down on the table. See you out. So this is A500 board we fixed in the previous live stream. Actually, it was the one with the serial port problem. So I'll switch power and video on. Uh, let's get the wrist strap on. Hang on a my mate Vince Watch. We're talking about my mate Vince. That's one of the watches he fixed on his channel. Actually, he was kind enough to give that to me when I bought a... Um, radio alarm clock off him one of the ones he fixed on his channel uh i've got a video coming up on that actually because there was something he missed um i i wasn't i'm not sure whether to share it or not i don't want to share it in the sense that it makes vince look like he's missed something but you know what he did miss something um it's not that uh you know it's not a big problem it just meant that i couldn't get the working with the power supply that was all um but anyway i might upload that separately uh where's the power supply switch now it's over here so if i we got that connected up so okay there, everything's all right, switch it on. And uh, I'll point you at the screen. So we might need to, hang on a minute, tripod has got on its own at the moment. Let's zoom a little bit. Hang on a minute, I can't zoom now. Yeah, if I'm going to continue doing streams like this, I might uh, think of ways to try to improve them a little bit um, by having a better kit, I don't know. So let's go to memory. Yeah, look, half meg chip, fast, zero, slow, zero. So it's still showing nothing. Um, shall I try changing that switch over? I wonder if it's a disable switch rather than an enable switch. Yeah, let's let's just try it in the other position. If that doesn't work, I think what we'll do then is uh, start probing it, maybe. We might need to swap the RAM out, but a lot of this RAM, well, I say a lot, we've got some of this RAM here. Oop. Cam really went there. Someone said they were waiting to happen. Almost. So let's uh, just try and disconnect this now. It's not the easiest thing to do. There we go. Didn't bend anything. And um, we'll just flip that uh, switch over and see what difference that makes. Literally, we just need to remove the solder, don't we? That's what we need to do. Personally, I would take all that stuff off there anyway. Um, 
you know, the pins. Can you see it's like, uh, look at this like this. It's like three horrible pins with wires stuck on it. I'll just get rid of that. Um, yeah, let's just test with the meter to see if it's open circuit now. I'm trying. Mike Simcox, have you ever worked out what that EVP was saying? The nearest I could hear, if it was an EVP, because like I say, it could just be noise, but you know what, I've never heard anything since or before on anything, and I must have recorded, you know, for my channel, thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of footage. I've never had anything like that before. Um, it sounded like it was saying, uh, hell is deep, Chris, if I'm honest. That's my interpretation of it. Every time I listen to it, I think that's really crystal clear exactly what it's saying. Uh, quite why someone would be saying that to me if there was such a thing, such a possibility. I honestly don't know. Anyway, that's open circuit now. So let's go and try that. Uh, but yeah, if you believe in things like that, um, I'm not sure whether I do or not, if I'm honest. I believe there's more to life than meets the eye. Right. So we connected up. The RAM's on there. I mean, the one thing I didn't do is inspect the underside of the solder points to make sure there was no damage there, but anyway, we can do that in a sec if that's not any different. So it's booting from the floppy drive again. This camera is really annoying me because, hang on, there you go. It's, it's got like super stiff on the, the adjustment, so I can't adjust it. Now it won't tighten up. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm doing here. The camera is just going all over the blooming place. There we go. These videos are getting—if you notice, these streams are getting progressively worse. <laughs> uh, memory. Ah, oh, look at that. Half mega chip. No fast, no slow. Oh. Um. Hmm. Must be the RAM. We must have some bad RAM. That's what I'm thinking. This is the same sort of problem I had with that other board, where, you know, you do various things and uh, it kind of doesn't make any sense. You're like, hang on a minute. Right, let me switch it off. Let me just try swap over the RAM. We could have the switch in the wrong position. I think what we might should, but well, what we should do is just quickly have a look at the A500 uh, Plus schematics or something, or the 500, 500 either, uh, and just have a look at which pin kind of disables it. Um, I'm assuming it works that way. And what I'm assuming is this switch probably routes to a single pin on here that literally enables or disables it. Does anyone know? Steven said diagram. Um, yeah, we could get diagram on there. But is that going to report? Well, it might do, actually. It might sort of start to see the RAM and then tell us if there's a fault there. Yeah, that's a good point. Actually, uh, hmm, let me just go and see if we've got diagram on the other side of the room. Got the launch kit. What's happening here with one diagram? I'm not sure. Yeah, I found the logic here. Let's. I can't find any single chip of diagram. I'm sure I've got one somewhere. I've got the two there that go on the twelve hundred or the four thousand. Anyway, let's uh, let's just remove the uh, chip here. Um, Let's get the SD strap back on again and disconnect the ROM. Move that out of the way and we'll just get logic in. I'm assuming that I don't need to do um, a mod to this. I think it's only the Rev. Is it? Oh, hang on. It's a oh, it's a six A. This one might be all right. Some of the earlier boards, like a, a Rev Five and a Rev three, you might need to you know swap A seventeen around. Um, anyway, I've talked about that a lot on various videos. Let's switch it back on. See what happens with that. Yeah, there we go. It's kind of I know you can't see it. It's doing its thing there. In Logica, I don't know why this camera suddenly started getting really stiff. There we go. Ooh. Yeah, this is all normal stuff. It's testing there. Let's see what it comes back with. Uh, I'm not sure that's normal. Should have finished testing by that stage.
Yeah, I think that's indicating a fault, actually. Hmm, diagram might be better to test this with, but as I say, I'm not sure where my chip is for that. It's just going to keep flashing forever and a day, that, I think, isn't it? I mean, what I really need to do is get one of these work in order that I can uh, test the RAM chips, I guess, to rule the RAM out. Yeah, that's not doing anything. That's not doing anything. It's just going to keep flashing around forever and a, a day, that, isn't it? So, still flashing there. Switch it off. Swap the run back over. I'm just going to quickly just swap out the chips one at a time from that other board, actually, just to rule them out because uh, I think the RAM chips on the other board are okay. I think I've tested those previously. On a board like this, because can you see these here? You've got one, two, three, four. You could probably, if these were socketed up, put these in here to test them, and vice versa. Um, is that the right way around there, Romeo says? So let me just power cycle it just to make sure it's, uh, it is booting again. Yep, I'll bring over that uh, other board, and we'll just uh, swap out those four chips one at a time. Bring the Mac over as well, actually, because I'm missing out on the chat on them. Yeah, I have an Amiga 500, it's a serial number 00538. Can that really be true? Yes, it probably is. Um, maybe you've got a super early uh, one there. Is it a Ref 3 by chance? Someone said uh, ground the pin. Yeah, so I think the pin needs grounding. Okay, well we can check that. Um, are you sure the jumper is not three pins in which two should be connected to enable it? Um, I can show you that. If I just take this out, hang on a minute. It's really not that easy because this board is a weird sort of shape. Hang on. I prefer it when they're longer. They're easy to get out that way. Just carefully flip it over. Um, yeah, so I'll try and show you what I was trying to show you before. So this pin here, you can sort of see it joins those two. So those two are joined anyway, yeah, to the single trace. And then the only other thing you can see, the trace on the other side here, can you see through the PCB, it comes to that pin. If you flip it over, you can actually see it go into it. Uh, sorry, I've come with that. There. So there is just literally two pins. It's either it's, it's open circuit or it's closed, you know. It's, it's like these two here join to that, or they don't. It really is that simple. At the moment, we've got it isolated. So it's open. Should it be open or should it be closed? Someone said feed it ground, so maybe um, that's where the, one of the wires goes to. In fact, you can tell actually it, it is. This is the ground rail. Sorry, this is the ground rail here, isn't it? Can it, um, it might not be. It could be the VCC rail. I think it's likely to be the ground rail, actually. Um, should we go check that? Because I think we're going to need to solder that blob back on there if the ground needs to go to it. But I did test connectivity. I followed this all the way around here, all the way down to uh, the pin it goes to down here, and it was okay. This is the thing, though. This is what why you can go around in circles sometimes with these, because the behaviour in terms of kickstart is you just get nothing. You know, so you're like left wondering what's the issue, especially if you don't see any bad connections or anything anywhere. Um, so let's just quickly just take it back over there. We'll just solder that um, point back up and we'll just measure that trace to make sure that trace is okay, I think. I want to do that anyway just to put the camera back on charge again if I can get the thing connection. Yeah, there we go. Let's just measure that before we start here. So, I mean, if we measure the two here, yeah, so it's not short at the moment. Let's just check from that one. No. Those two are joined together, but there, it's like I said, there's a, a trace in, the, in between those two, so it is just on on off anyway. Let's follow this thin trace here, see where that goes. Comes out around here and it goes to that pin there. Yeah, so that's definitely joined there. Let's just flip it over and let's just see what that other one is. Is that ground? Uh, hopefully, you can still see what I'm doing here. Um, yeah, so this here. Let's go to the negative side of that cap there. Yeah, it's a ground. So it's all it's doing is connecting ground up to uh, that pin uh, there. 
But as I say, I can't honestly remember whether you need to ground a pin to disable it or ground a pin to enable it. And that adds to the complication here, doesn't it? Let's get a bit of solder over those two again. There we go. And we'll just measure that again. So, uh, in theory, that uh, single pin down here should be uh, grounded now. Um, Yeah, and I think it is. Uh, let me just see where a ground is. Yeah, so the ground is this trace here. So from there to here. Yeah, it's now grounded. That pin is now grounded. Anyway, we'll do what, exactly what I said we would do. We'll, we'll test it, test it again, and then just swap the, the board chips over. Make sure it's aligned properly. That's it. I should chop that wire off, really. It uh, serves no purpose, does it? It's just flapping in the breeze, though. Um, yeah, I'll just, uh, I'll quickly just boot that again off camera. Just want to make sure it's, it's definitely not working, and then we'll sort the chips out. Yeah, someone said I still think those sockets should be replaced. These sockets should be replaced. Yeah, assuming you took out these sockets, yeah, the other three, perhaps. Um, but I'll be honest, they look absolutely crystal clear, you know, clean. There's nothing in them. There's nothing on the pins. The pins of the chips that came out look like new. The chips look like new. So, um, yeah, I'm sceptical. It's a socket issue. So it's still showing... Uh, I'll show you quickly. It's still showing uh, only some chip ramp. No fast, no slow. So uh, let's switch that off. And we'll swap the first one of the chips around. Uh, so we'll take one of the ones off this one here. You can see I've just started to lever it out here. Yeah, so this one's had the new sockets before as well, and this one still doesn't work. <laughs> Despite the fact I know the chips are all right. So let's do this one. So, we'll put that across the other side of the room out of the way, and we'll get this one in. I think they're exactly the same uh, chips, these. Not like a different manufacturer or anything, they're exactly the same. So, uh, I could be sticking a mark on that, couldn't I? Let me just go and get my pen, hang on a sec. Just because, knowing me, I will... Uh, there we go, I'll stick a few blobs on it. I will... Uh, Get them mixed up and have a like which one did we swap and which one didn't we swap. Just the sort of thing I would do. Just uh, put them in an ultrasonic cleaner. Yeah, yeah, you could do. But again, I <laughs> haven't got an ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, yeah. Right, let's switch it on. See if that makes any difference. I'll, I'll point you at the screen once I've done it. Just give me a sec, it's booting up. Uh, memory. Yeah. Exactly the same. Zero, zero, zero. I know what's going to happen, we're going to swap all these, it's going to still not work. And then we're going to look at the, the, the switch, you know, that, that pin that's being fed ground at the moment, and go, ah, it shouldn't be fed ground, we've disabled the ramp. <laughs> that's what's going to happen. Uh, let's put that one over there. Get the second one off here. Uh, I'm wearing an ESD wrist strap here, by the way, before the ESD police start barking up. Oh, so hard to... It's not connected the most, not switched on. There we go. Put there. Make sure the pins are all straight. Get it the right way around. Switch it on again. Let's see what happens this time. I'll show you in a sec. Let me just feel the tops of these. Yeah, it's booted all right. Let me just go into the memory test. Same again. <laughs> Don't. Well, there's only two more to go. Again, let's just stick uh, some red marks on that.
I'm guessing it's going to be the one that was corroded, if that, assuming that is the original ship that was in that position. Um, but this might not fix it. And the next thing might be the logic probe, actually. Because if you have got a bad or missing trace somewhere, you'll be able to spot it with the logic probe. You can also do some connectivity tests, as I sort of explained before, between all four chips to see if there's a missing uh, address bit or something. Anyway, that's the third one off there. So let's get the third one back into here. Yeah, there we go. All looks looks nice and straight. Switch it on again. Just catch up with the chat. Stephen, I don't wear ESD because I've uh, been zapped by mains while wearing. Well, yeah, but it does hurt if you've, if you've got an ESD wrist strap and you get hit by mains. So, same again. So you can see, zero and zero. <sighs> Joy. So that's the one we've uh, just done. The final one is the one that's had the new uh, socket. Oh, is it that one that had the new socket? I can't, I can't remember now. So we'll find out. I think this one's the one that's had the new socket, actually. Yeah, that's the new socket. So I'll put that one out of the way and we'll bring the other one in. Of course, my memory could be incorrect and maybe I didn't chest these four chips off this board, but I'm sure I did. I'm sure I did, and that was what confused me more about what was wrong with this one. Because uh, on this one, it's had new sockets, the chips have been tested. It still doesn't work. <laughs> that one's bizarre. It's going to be something to do with the, uh, the thing here on that one, I think. Because that one did have a fair bit of corrosion. This one, not so much. But it could have been cleaned off before it got to me. There we go. Stick a mark on that one, we don't need to now, we've done them all, but anyway, that's that. Try and uh, switch it on again. Stone cold. See what happens this time. It seems to take longer to boot then. Nope, same thing. Oh, joy. Right, I'll get the logic probe onto it, I think. I'll go and get that uh, pin out. Just to see if you can see anything obvious, like a missing uh, floating address bit or something on one chip, you know, that, that's all you need. You just need one connection somewhere to be a problem. Hang on a minute, I've got to try and untangle the uh, logic probe now. It's tangled around everything here. So we need to find somewhere to connect it. Um, ground, I'm going to take uh, down here, I think. Yeah, some of the early revs. Those ground pads there don't join up. I think like Rev three, for example. So if you were to stick uh, stick one there, you wouldn't have a ground. Um, and then we just want the positive side of one of these caps. Maybe that one. Um, I'm going to go with the one over here. I'll just show you. I'm going to go with that one there, like that. I think if I can get it to stay on. That's it. Let's just uh, test it somewhere. Yeah, you can see. Hopefully, and let's. Have a look at this. I could do with going and getting that pin out actually, but anyway, let's just have a look along here. Well, I'm sure what I'm looking to see if there's anything floating. Can you see that? Yeah, you can. I'm not making a good connection there, am I? There we go. I thought for a minute we had a floating pin, but it wasn't actually. Hang on, we've got a floating pin there. See that? Yeah, so this is the point someone else just made a minute ago about I would swap out the other sockets, actually. And that's the thing. It may well be that you've got a tra one bad trace under there. That means... Yeah, that one's floating as well. Why is that floating? Yeah, that's flowing. Got a few floating pins here, look. Yeah, let's focus on the one that I uh, swapped out, which is uh, this one here. Let's uh, just check this one, see if any of these are flowing here.
Yeah, they're looking alright on that side. Let's try this side. Hang on, I can't see what I'm doing here. There we go, that one's alright. That one's floating. The second pen. It's the same on that one. It's not on that one. That one's low. That one's pulsing. That one's pulsing. Yeah, that's a problem. Pulsing. That one's floating. So we've got two on this side here that are floating. That one's floating. It's pulsing. How have we got so many bad connections there? That's a new socket as well. Um, so let's let's just compare. So let me just move you around a little bit. Maybe point you downwards slightly if I can. And uh, let's just compare to the chips that are nearby. Hang on a minute. So which one's the floating one? We know the second one up here was. Yeah, so that one's that one isn't. That one isn't. That one isn't. Let me just get the uh, pin out there. I'll be right back. Hang on. So, the second, uh, well, pin two. It looks like pin two is the one that was floating. So, if we uh, have a look back at this again. Pin two is, oh, well, hang on. We've got a date a bit missing, haven't we? Yeah, that shouldn't be happening. It's IO2. IO got one, two, three, four. So its data bit is not even connected, is it? One of its data bits is not connected. Let's just check that again. Yeah, it's flowing. Hmm. Right, what I'm going to do is uh, just make a note of that. I'm just going to quickly draw, and I'll show you this. Not very exciting stuff, is it? But just to help me, uh, was your the real time clock there? R T C, and we've got one chip here, one chip here. Strangest rectangles ever. So this chip here, uh, pin two, pin two's a problem. Just go back over here a sec. Anyway, you can see what I'm doing. I'm just making a note of which pins and which chips I think are issues, and then I can go back to the uh, mat over there and work out that one's all right, that one's all right, that one's floating again. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, fifth one up. Fifth one up on that one's flowing. Two, three, four, five. That one's flowing. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so five on all of them is floating. Let's just uh, see what pin uh, 5 is. Oh, no connection. So there we go. I can rule that one out. So we're not bothered about that. So let's just continue along. Six. Well, six is floating. That's not normal. That one's all right. That one's all right. That one's all right. That one's all right. Yeah, so five and six on that one. Let's try this one. One, two, three, four, five. Five floating. Six is okay. Six is okay. Six is okay. So we've got two pins on that chip, haven't we? We've got uh, pin two, and we've got pin six. Uh, we'll stick something there, but six. Um, so let's just for sanity, just do one more check on the other sides of these chips here, just to make sure we haven't got it. Because I thought I might have seen some on the left-hand side, but maybe not. But anyway, you can see the advantage using a logic probe from a lot of this. Because you could literally spend hours going round and round and round in circles now, going, what's not connected where? Especially if you've swapped the sockets, that can be the other thing that stumps you. That might be the issue with that other board, because they haven't got to the point where I've checked it with the logic probe yet. I may well go, okay, well, all the sockets went on okay, I couldn't see any damaged traces, but you know what? Something is damaged somewhere. You ultimately, you just end up with a wire on the underside of the board. There might just be one wire that's needed, and then you're sorted. Yeah, they're all looking fine. So let's take it back over to the mat. I'll put you back on charge again. Switch the Amiga off. Let's try and get this out again. Hang on a minute. Let's put the wrist strap back on while I do this, while I wrestle with it. There we go. I've got it out. And uh, I have to disconnect the wrist strap before I walk away with it. And trip this off up, probably. And we'll take, uh, take that and that. I'm going to scratch it too because I might need it. Back over to the mat. 
So hopefully this should be really simple to fix. Famous last words, isn't it? Uh, some others are up today. Refreshment seems better. Okay, someone might have had a problem with the stream there, but we uh, we seem to be uh, still there. I can see we've got wow, 120 odd people watching. Thanks for joining. If uh, you've just joined, right, we've got power back on again. It's yeah, charging up 27%. Yeah, not good. Uh, again, it's one of these days where I didn't plan to do a stream. So where's my bit of paper? Right, here's my bit of paper. So we know pin two, and pin six on that chip. Um, there is the issue, and if we have a look at pin two and pin six, uh, so one of these was not connected, was it? Oh no, that was that was five. Five was the one that's not connected. So pin two is yeah the data bit there. So we need to work out where that goes, uh, and pin six is A zero. So as I was saying before, A zero on this ch uh, on this chip uh, here is going to be connected to A zero on that chip and that one and that one. So it's really simple just to put a wire across there. So we'll deal with that one first. That's uh, pin six. Um, we can test that on the meter as well. Let's, uh, let's just see. So hang on a minute. Which way's pin six now? Got pin one. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So if we test between these two, yeah, we don't have a join there. So let's just test this one. Hang on. Don't have a join there either. Hang on a minute. How's that? How's that? I'm looking at this the right way around, aren't I? Uh, so I'm trying not to block the camera. Let me move the camera around this way and then I can actually see exactly what I'm doing. It looks like you're the one taking the measurements when I do it like this. <laughs> uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, let's try it between these two here. Three, six. Yeah, those are joined. Those are joined. Bear in mind, these legs on these chips have not been cleaned up. So, yeah, and those two are joined. Can you see that? It's just uh, this one here. So, let's get a little wire on there to fix that. Uh, my solder gone? Bring the solder in. Just turn up that wire. I always have to cut it back because the uh, plastic covering just melts back a bit on it. So as we flip this over now, it's going to be from this side here, a six one long. Get a little bit of solder onto there. That doesn't look like that's solder very well. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I think I see the break. The break might be. Let me just see if I can show you this. If I can see it now. There. Can you see that? There. That looks like a break, actually. Not sure if you can see that little trace because it is that wire. So uh, anyway, I think it is. Let's just count those again before I solder the wrong one. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, the first one there that goes up to the other side. So we just want to literally just go in a straight line here to the next chip up. Lift it up a little bit so that we can turn it. So it's moving around on its own now. There we go. 
So I've got our little uh, fixed file now. Let's just measure that again. So there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. I always check to pins opposite, you know, the ones next to it, just in case you've bridged it or something like that. Um, but yeah, that should be joined on all of them now. Yeah, so that's all those joined. So it's just the date of it now, isn't it? Um, so let me just check what that was. That was pin two. So what we need to do here is have a look at pin two, perhaps. Uh, if we can get this all around. So pin one. Yeah, pin one's here. That's pin two, so we can actually see it. We can see where it's going. Uh, and again, I'm not sure if I see a break. There, maybe. I don't know, but anyway. In any case, if we follow pin two, it comes up here, and it goes to one of the things up here. So um, I just need... Uh, and you can see the solder points on this are awful. Can you see this? I started to reflow some of these when I uh, replaced this socket, and this needs more clean-up work. Yeah, it looks awful. Um, yeah, so some of these need resoldering. Definitely. But it wasn't an issue with the other sockets, was it? It looks like the issue we've got here is literally just related to this, this socket. Um, right, let me see if I can just follow this. It comes up here. It's the second It's the second one of these, so it's not that one. It's that one. Oh, hang on, no, it's not. It's the one next to it. It's this one here. Yeah. So, uh, you know, when you've got a pair, when you've got a pair of traces like that and you're trying to follow, uh, we, we need to follow the second one, don't we? If we just follow the first one, you follow the first one, it's the outer one, isn't it? So we know that that's this here. Then you've got to look at the, the one that's right next to it. So it's going to be this one here. It makes sense. So it's, it can be quite easy to follow traces at distance that way. Uh, so let me just get a bit of solder on there. Uh, crazy amount, just so I can uh, remember which one it is. It's, it's that one. Yeah, it's that one. There. Really big blob of solder there, just so I don't mistake it. Now, you probably wouldn't normally go with such a large blob, but... Not very exciting, this, is it? I'll be honest, I thought I would have got this straight away with the socket. I thought, would you get the socket on there and we could have been on something else, but... Yeah. I think I've never got to plan, do they? Certainly not when I'm streaming. Right, so pin two is this one. We should need to just literally pull that out to the point over here i'll have a little bit of a flex in it i don't like cables to be too taut there but at the same time not too long either and we'll snip it there again just turn up that so the only question now is is the jumper in the right position and have i put faulty ram chips on it <laughs> <laughs> are we now going to be faced with swapping the ram chips back over one at a time because that's a possibility never say never so, uh, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's it. Yeah, just doing a sense check there, just to make sure that I've sold it to the right place over here and I have. So, let's go and give that another try. Do you think that's going to work? I suspect it's not going to do. I suspect the jumper's going to be wrong. But uh, we'll try it anyway. So, uh, I'll just put that there a sec. Get the back on. Plug it back in again, making sure to align it properly. There we go. And switch it on. I guess while it's booting, we can have a look with the logic probe there just to see if those two pins have uh, sorted themselves out. Can you see that? Yeah. That's pin two, look, pulse in there. So that's our data bit. And then A0 is six, wasn't it? One, two, three, four, not connected, six. That's A0. So we've solved that. Let me uh, go back to the uh, memory test. Hang on. Oh, yes. Sweet. Yeah. That's the equivalent of Finch going, uh, I think he goes, yes. Like, uh, yeah, sorry. Crazy cam again. Crazy angle. Can you see? Hang on. The good news. The good news is the camera is off the top of the screen. Okay. 
I'm not sure you can still see that actually. <laughs> what is going on here? Uh, yeah, there you go. Anyway, you can see up here uh, now, I think, one meg of chip. So that's the interesting, another interesting observation with these Rev6 boards. I don't think anybody's changed the jumper on this. Oh, hang on, maybe they have. Yeah, maybe they have. I'll show you in a minute. I think someone's changed the solder blob there to make it, uh, it put it in the chip RAM area, but it's coming up with one meg of chip now. Uh, I'll just show you that, just so you can see. I'm uh, not talking rubbish here. You can see someone has been tinkering with that jumper there. Can't quite, quite see what. It looks like a squarish piece of solder. So, uh, yeah, that's been changed. This hasn't. That one's on its default setting. But this RAM is now working. So, uh, yeah, that's fantastic. What I think we'll do now is I'll just I'll point you back down here a sec. Hang on. We'll just swap out the chips one at a time again and just make sure. Uh, I should do a test, really. Let me do that. Let me do that. Let me just let you do one pass. Because we haven't really tested it. It's detecting it, but it's not work, you know, it hasn't actually gone through each location and uh, tested to see if it is actually storing things. So uh, I'll just point you back up there and we'll catch up with the chat a little bit whilst that's just testing that. It's only going to take a minute or so. Then we'll swap the chips over. I'll just set, swap them all at once instead of one at a time. And we'll test the other ones, you know, it's original ones that were on there. And if that works, that's um, it's good news. Now, Tom did say I could keep this one, but you know what? I'll send this one back to Tom, actually, because I've got enough of these RAM expansions here to last me a lifetime. And then Tom can perhaps, uh, I don't know, stick it on eBay. Cheap, you know, £10 buy it now kind of thing, A500 RAM expansion. I'd rather he did that, because I've got enough, like I said, that I could do that with myself, if I'm completely honest. Um, it'll be useful to somebody out there. Somebody out there is bound to want to have half a meg to an Amiga. Um, and I just say share the love with it. Don't expect to be making lots of money off these things. You're not going to get 20 or 30 quid for it, but just stick it on there for five or a tenner, you know, buy it now. Works fine. Um, yeah, it's going to help somebody out, isn't it? Someone said, come on, do it like Vince just this once. Yeah, he, he shouts yes, doesn't he? I can't even remember exactly how he does it, but he does. But yes. Anyway, that's gone round six times now, hasn't it? So that RAM's all right. So we'll just swap the chips over. We'll have a quick look at that other one. I think what I might do with that other one, because I've already had the, you know, put new sockets, we'll do the same thing. We'll just probe it with Logic Pro, see what we see, see if we can quickly fix that one, because that might be um, the same. Uh, what am I doing? I don't need to take it out. Let's just leave it in. Yeah, that might be the same uh, issue. A broken tray somewhere. Yeah, I lost my pointy tool there for a minute. So, uh, let's drop back on. And uh, let's disconnect those. That's one. Anyway, at least my memory's correct in terms of me having tested that memory on a, another board. I do, do have recollections of doing that, so I, I didn't know that that RAM was all right. But we may find one of these, the RAMs on this, uh, that were on here originally, aren't okay. Certainly the one that was corroded. And the other thing, obviously, is the clock. We don't know whether the clock's working on here, but I might not do that in this video, thinking about things. I didn't expect this to take so long, you see. I thought this would be a nice, quick and easy, ten-minute job. Uh, so much for that. Yeah, here we go. Let's power it back on. Feels okay. Oh, hang on a minute. Got yellow screen. That's not good. So, maybe we've got a bad RAM here, actually. Let's start with this one, I think, because this is the one that looks pretty worn on top. That might be the one that's had the corrosion. I think I might have inadvertently stuck it back in its original socket. Let's try swapping it. Let's do them one at a time. I've got these the right way around, haven't I? Yeah, I have. Yeah, just checking that. Switch it back on again. Yeah. So, we have got a faulty RAM chip as well. So, it's, uh, you know, bad socket, damaged traces, bad RAM chip, I think. Yeah, it's one meg detected there. Let's let that go through. So, that's using three chips and uh, you know we've obviously just took off this one the, the reason I just picked on this one can you see uh, let's see if we can get it to focus if you look at the print on it yeah I'm not sure how well that's 
coming across because you see it's worn off. The print's worn off on it. So I figured that that's the one that had the most corrosion. Look at the legs on it. I think it is. I think that's the one that was in that socket, actually. Yeah, so socket kills uh, traces, sockets, uh, sorry, sockets. Corrosion kills sockets, traces, and sometimes the actual chip. Someone said upside down, rest in pieces. What was upside down? Yeah, I didn't get it in upside down, did I? Did I? Let me just try that again. I'm starting to wonder what that reference was there now, upside down. Yeah, just for good measure, we'll just swap that, put the original chip back in, and uh, make sure I didn't, I didn't have it upside down, did I? I'm sure I didn't. You got me thinking now, did I? No, I didn't. It's in the right way up, and it's yellow screen. Yeah, you can see it's the right way up. So, yeah, that chip is uh, faulty. That's an example of the yellow screen giving you random curveballs and things, isn't it? You know, it could be literally anything when you get a yellow screen. Because the last thing I want is people associating yellow screen with just the buster. Going, oh, you've got a yellow screen, it's a buster problem. Well, you don't have a buster on these boards. <sighs> yellow screen I means something's gone wrong early in the boot process. Um, let's swap that back. We could just see if the real-time clock is ticking here now, I think. Hang on, now I've got one of the chips in the wrong way. It's because you can't see what I'm doing here. I've stuck one of the chips upside down. Oh, joy. Right, let's switch it on again. Let's see if that's... Hang on. Am I getting... What is going on here now? I'm really confusing myself here. Got a yellow screen again. Why have we got a yellow screen there now? Hang on. I'm perplexed now. Yeah, I am completely confused. Because that one's got a red dot on it. We know that that was okay a minute ago. Let's try that again. Maybe it wasn't in the socket right. No, it's giving us a yellow screen again. What? The one thing I did just do is I accidentally took this one out. So maybe that's right. Let's, uh, let's try that with uh, another one of those red ones. Come on, let's mark with a red dot. Let's see if that solves it. No, it's not. Hmm. <sighs> I am really confused. Could be the uh, could be that. Let's just keep swapping these in case one of those is an issue. One of them could be intermittent as well. You really have to test these things for a period of time, not just a quick, you know, <coughs> ten second job. No, that's giving us the other screen still. The final one. This is now the original four chips that we'll work in a minute ago. So I don't know. Let's try it again. Look, I'll show you. Oh god. Man. Someone said reset expansion. It's possible, but let me just let me just, you know, uh let me just sort of human myself, hang on a sec. Let's just if I can. I'm not sure I can get the socket off, the, the chip out the socket. Yeah, let's just take that out. Because what I do know is I think some of the data bits go straight to that, don't they? So if you've got a problem with that, I can kill everything. No, it's not that. It's still a yellow screen. So let's uh, reseat it again. It could also be a bit of current. As, uh, look at that, that's not what you want to do. A bit of current has um, broken a trace there. It's one thing testing uh, briefly. Yeah, I bent the pins a little bit there. I can straighten those later. Let's just get that back on. It's 
certainly not easy to get that off and on sometimes. Right, let's try it again. Yeah, it's alright now, so maybe there is a bit of corrosion in there. Whoever suggested that, that was a very good idea. Uh, I'll show you, it's back up again. So, uh, I'll just hang on a minute. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's, it's back up again, but it's seen no RAM lock. Chip zero, fast zero. Uh, sorry, chip half, fast zero, slow. Zero. Um, hmm. Could be as a consequence of me having just bent, bent that uh, thing there, but. It's really not easy. I much prefer it when the board is longer. It's far easier to get out then. I don't understand how that could be okay for a minute or two and then not. You'd have to make sure you get that correctly aligned, but try again. Someone's put the chip back in. The real time clock chip, you mean? You shouldn't need to, though, because that's just for the real. I think it's working again now. So there, there is there's some corrosion or something in the socket edge there, I think, because we've now got one big chip again. So, uh, yeah. Right, let's get the real time clock chip back in. Uh, Again, I've had the EST wrist drop on all of the while here, by the way. Um, so I'll get the chip back in. I think it goes that way, according to the socket. And uh, we'll just we'll just test that again, just to make sure it's not yellow screening again. Yeah, those real-time clock chips, it will work without it. You won't get... Well, obviously, real-time clock won't work without it, but you won't get a uh, yellow screen. So you could, in theory, get a yellow screen with a real-time clock chip, because I think three of the data bits, aren't they read by the, the main data bus there? I think they are. Well, certainly on the A4000, so that's that's working. So let me just swap those RAM chips back over again. We'll leave that one in because we know one of those of the chips is faulty. I think we can confirm that. You never know. Maybe it was just a red herring at the point when we swapped that over. Maybe that um, it was all right. If you see what I'm trying to say. So we'll get the three in with a good print first. That's one. Uh, that's crystal there, by the way. It was shorting. Um, the cam was shorting so that one of the legs on it. Um, I've just moved it a little bit. Let's just try and straighten it like that. There we go. So we've got three of its original ones, and that one with the red mark on it. Let's just see if that works. So uh, it's booting. Let's go to memory. Yeah, one meg. Let's just do test all. Let's just let it go through one pass there, and then we'll swap that one single chip again just to see if the yellow screen comes back. Because it could have been a red herring. You know, it's, it's more likely. Oh, I can't see the one thing there. 1.5. It's nearly there. Yeah, there you go. 2.1. So it's gone through once. So let's uh, swap that one chip again. Just making sure it's off. It is off. Yeah, it's off. Um, and we'll just uh, test the clock as well, but it might not detect the clock because there's no battery. I found that as well on some of these boards, that when you've not got a battery on there, it doesn't even see the clock. Which is a bit weird, because actually, oh, I've got it wrong, wrong way. When you power it on with uh, without a battery, you've still got uh, a supply rail to it. So how on earth it knows it's got a battery to start with, I don't know, but I have seen that. I think I saw that on the 2000s, actually. So, it's definitely... The right way around. There we go. Let's try it again. Yeah, it's not giving us a yellow screen there. So I think that was just uh, a classic example of uh, a bad connection. Yeah, look. So all the RAM chips are all right. So I think the next thing I would do on that before you know I had any confidence in it is to you know get some vinegar in here and just leave it to soak for a bit, scrub it, scrub it, scrub it. We beat that a few times, I think, because that's probably what it is. The board this would have come out of, you know, this, the connections here would have been all green and furry and stuff at the point where the battery started to leak, probably. Um, that's good though, because that means all the RAM's all right. No, no faulty RAM chips. It was just bad socket, bad trace. So 
terrible fire. This is a classic example of why I hate sockets. Perfectly illustrates why they suck. Yeah. Uh, just looking back to see if I've missed anything. This must have a check pin header both sides. Yeah, so I think he's... Yeah, he talk about this here. Anyway, that has gone round a number of times now. You can see that 5.1 times. So that's that. Let me just carefully plug in that other board. Now we know the RAM's all right, don't we? Know Not only this RAM, the other RAM. So we can pl plug its RAM back in. It's going to take me a few minutes to straighten those pins out later, actually. I'm in a right mess of that. Let's just put that down here. Let's get this back up. Um, yeah, you can see those top pins are just a little bit bent. But anyway, I'll, I'll sort that later. It's not the end of the world. And again, ESD wrist strap is on. Let's just get this division chips back into this. So the pin one marking is down there, isn't it? I think. We know these are good. Ah, this has got a switch thing as well. We might need to just check that, actually. That might be the issue with this one. There we go. Right. Switch it on. But I think, yeah, I think this needs to be grounded here, doesn't it? Let's just measure that with the pro. Hang on. Yeah, still connected. Let me just measure that. Hang on, why is that not showing anything now? Oh, I've lost my ground. Try that again. So we've got the uh, same sort of thing, three three holes look. Those two are low. And that one is floating. So is that the one that goes all the way over to here somewhere? I think it does. Maybe it's one of these here. Yeah, I think it goes there. I think that's where it goes, that, and it's floating. So we need to make that low, I think, would we? Let me just have a look at the other one. How do we do it on this one? I can't remember now. I've got a brain like a... I don't know what. Yes, yeah, so we joined them up here, didn't we? So we're pulling it low. So we pulled it low to enable it. So I think we need to do the same with that one, actually. So let's uh, just switch the power off. Just pull it out a bit. I'll pull it out completely, rather. Come on. There you go. We'll just wheel back over there and uh, just bridge that with a little bit of solder. One take a sec. I'm probably going to get off soon. I didn't think I was going to be going on this long, actually. I might, I might come back later. I don't know. Because uh, I was going to have a look at that Archimedes stuff, wasn't I? But it just took so long doing this. Just pull you down a bit. Um, I haven't had any lunch yet. Yeah, a bit of solder's not going to reach across there, is it? Let me just stick a piece of kyanar over it. It's quite a large gap. I have any theory? Um, so I think I've got a wire leg up here somewhere, have I? I thought I did. Yeah, it doesn't really matter, does it? Let's, let's do it on the underside here. It wants to be... Yeah, you can see two pins there are joined together as default, but we need to join it to that one. So we need to join that one there to there. It's doing this quick and dirty. I'll do. Yeah, there you go. So you can see a quick bodge there just to join those up. Let's uh, go and try that again. I'm going to need to get off soon anyway because, like I say, this camera may go. We've been over here at the other side of the room for a while. It wasn't very charged up, so please bear with me if it does go. Uh, but we're going to be wrapping up this video up soon anyway, I think. So let me switch that on. Point you at the screen and see what happens, if anything. This camera seems to have... It's got, like, notches. It's either pointing straight up now or... Hardly anything at all. I'll look at that later anyway. Memory looks look, see nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. So we know the ships are alright, so it's going to be the uh, same sort of thing, I think, where the logic probe may help, may shed some light. So let's have a quick look at this. So it might move you there a little bit. You can see a bit better. Um, 
Let's just check the tops of those. Everything feels all right. So pulsing, 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 low, pulsing, pulsing, pulsing. That side's all right. Pulsing, pulsing, pulsing high, high, nothing. That's pin fives in it, it's not connected. We learnt that on the last one. Yeah, well, that side of that chip looks all right, I think. It's, uh, it's not the issue. Hang on, next chip. Don't know why I start testing the same blooming chip then. Could be the, uh, mm, I don't know. I was going to say the real-time clock chip, but I don't think so. It's been five again. Go to this side here in a second. It's been five again. Hmm. This is going to confuse me, this one. It's like I say, though, I've replaced the sockets on this one already. Oh, hang on, we've got one missing there, look. There we go, that's the issue. Sweet, so uh, the logic probe has uh, fixed the uh, thing again. So, which one was that? It was one, two, three, pin four. Uh, there. I'm not sure if that's one of the data bits, it could be, but it's uh, floating again. So, uh, let me just make a mark on that. Uh, four. I can't even see that, it's not even marking it, is it? Yeah, it's not pin four though, is it? It's like, because it starts pin one here. So it's like, and these are 10 on each side, so it must be uh, 17, 8, hang on, 17, 18, 19, pin 17. So it's pin 17 on that third one there is floating. So anyway, let's just continue along and look at the next one. And it's the same there. That's pin five again. I think. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So, pin 17 on both of these chips here are not joined up to here, I think. I think that's probably what it is. It's probably an address bit or something. C could be data bits or something. Now, I'll just show you something actually interesting while I've been probing that. <laughs> Look at the screen, it's got a weird colour. Uh, I don't know if I've shorted something there or what, but anyway, let me just reboot that. Yeah, it did go a strange colour. It's alright now. Right, let's uh, power it off. Wheel back over there again. Oh, try and disconnect it again. Look. There we go. At least I can uh, plug it back in charge while we're off here for a minute. I'll do that straight away, so we don't lose the power. Yeah, that's close. We're down to 10% now, guys. <laughs> that was cutting it fine. So, as we look at it that way, test the meter again, continuity. Um, before we do that, let's just have a look on uh, here again. So... Pin 17. Oh, it's a cas. Yeah. So they're going to be joined together, aren't they? Um, well, they should be. Just put it on beat. And just put you down a little bit. So, uh, I think about it was this side here, wasn't it? It's like 20, 19, 18, 17. So let's see, let's see if those two are joined. No, they're not joined, are they? They're not going to be joined. These two are, I think. Yeah. So they're not even joined to each other. 
which is interesting. Oh, yeah, they are. Yeah, so they're joined to each other. Yeah, these two are joined to each other on that pin, but they're not joined to this one. So we need to do it. Hang on. Yeah, fourth one down from there. Hang on, one, two, three, four. Wants to go across to that. Ch hang on. That chip there, fourth one down. I think. Probably going to join the wrong thing to the wrong thing here. <laughs> we'll soon find out. We'll soon find out. So, again, a little bit of uh, solder on there. Tune that up to there. And pull it straight across, snip it. Lift it up a little bit, turn it. Yeah, so my recommendation to you when you're trying to deal with RAM faults on these uh, A500 memory expansions is use logic uh, probe like that because you'll find that's nine times out of ten that's going to be the issue. You're going to have broken traces. You might even not need to swap sockets and all that sort of stuff. But I'll be honest, if the socket, if there is a socket on there and the corroded, just replace the blown things. Um, like I did on this one. This one's had four brand new sockets. I haven't finished cleaning up the rest up here yet and I haven't done anything with the real time clock, but just puzzled as to why that wasn't working when it all looked okay. But anyway, let's just flip that over. I'll just measure with continuity again. Hopefully, I'm just thinking if I joined that to the wrong thing there. No, I haven't. Hopefully, that uh, should deal with the problem now. So, uh, pin 17 here to that one, joined to that one, joined to that one, joined. So, let's uh, quickly wheel back over there and uh, give that a try. Yeah, we're down to, as I say, 10%. So, if you've got any questions or anything, now is the time to fire them over to me because I think I'm going to have a break after this. I'll be back later or tomorrow uh, when that socket's, when that connector's strained up there as well. I'll do that later off camera. Um, so, let's plug that in, switch it on, and see what happens. I mean, I've got a good feeling because what else what else could it be really? We know the four chips on there are okay. Yay, one meg chip look. Test all memory. Let that go down a, uh, around a cycle there. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So as I say, I've got a bunch of these building up now, these RAM expansions. I fixed about three or four, which you'll see in upcoming videos uh, in a similar sort of way. Um, I also got one of these that I upgraded as well. It was one that was I had space for eight chips, and I actually upgraded it to uh, a one meg card. Um, but you'll see that in a separate video. Anyway, that's that's gone around three times. Or it's on its third pass rather, and no issues at all. So not particularly exciting stuff, but I mean, hopefully it's, uh, it's kept you guys uh, entertained this afternoon. Even if it's just because you got a laugh out of me bending the uh, thing there when I pulled this out before. Yeah, there we go. So we'll clean that up. Uh, it's fairly clean, that one. I mean, the thing, thing, thing I haven't done there that I was going to do was just test the real-time clock, but you know what? I can do that in the next stream or something. It's going to be far quicker and simpler to do that in a t as a two-minute thing rather than just extend and extend and extend this video. Um, I had hoped, as I say, I said at start, to show you some of that uh, A3000. I'll just pull it into the shot here. Yeah, I'd hoped to spend some time removing a few things from here, but... Just looking at the time, it's half two, I've had no lunch yet. So, I mean, I might come back later, after I've you know, had an hour or two rest kind of thing. I've got a few things to do as well, including putting a few of the bits of the shopping away. Um, so, yeah, thank you, uh, Mike Timcox there. Great stream again, thank you. Um, yeah, there's been a few mistakes in here. I'm not proud of the fact that I bent those uh, expansion connectors there, but they're easy enough to straighten back out. Um, we needed to do it anyway, because I wanted to test that RAM on that board. And, Get those things back over to Tom because that's the thing really. I'm trying to focus on finishing things up here. We will have a look, quick look back at the A4000s at some point as I finish tidying them up and get one of those back uh, to Stephen. Uh, I'd like to try and get one sent back sooner rather than later because then it allows Stephen to maybe consider doing some of the things with the 4000 if he wants to. He's got a board to start playing around with and measuring on, and I don't know whatever you know he might want to do with it. So thank you very much for all the comments and things. Um, I'm not sure what I've missed. I've missed a lot of things that have been going along here. It's very hard for me to keep up with the chat. But uh, I'll have a read back through this later and get back to anybody if I've missed anything uh, 
etc. <sighs> put you back in me. Yeah, so thanks a lot, guys. I will uh, catch you later. Cheers.